Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today I am going to show you how I process my FDM prints to get rid of every single layer line. So let's go ahead and get into this video. So I was browsing Thingiverse and I saw this model come across and I was like, oh my god, I have to print it. So I did. And I actually printed it in FDM and I did it on my longer LK4 Pro as well as my Ender 3 Pros. They didn't turn out too well because the supports just, they held on too much and it just really needed a lot of cleanup. And I wanted to do this model justice because of what I've got planned for it when I come to paint it. So I figured this is a prime opportunity for me to show you you how I can process my FDM prints to be able to make them look like resin 3D prints. The one disclaimer I will say, this does not work for every single 3D print for FDM. Because if your model has crazy amounts of little fine details, by the time you're done with this process, you might lose a good portion of those details. But this was a perfect example because it is a cartoon and it needs to be nice and smooth. So if your 3D prints are supposed to be smooth and they just got too many layer lines or supports or something like that, this will absolutely work for you. As well as if you actually have certain parts and pieces that you need to have smooth in your 3D prints, you can use this process as well. And just to let you know, I have all of my Amazon affiliate links down below for you, but a lot of this you can also get just at a hardware store. Now the one thing I will say that this, it takes a while to do. So you just gotta take the time and be patient with every step. Because, I mean, garbage in, garbage out. If you don't do a good job at it, it's not going to give you good results. It's the amount of effort you put into it. So if you want your FDM prints to look like resin 3D prints, it's going to take some work. Now, all of those disclaimers aside, let's go ahead, jump to the table, and I'm going to show you my processes of how I created this. So to start out, I just wanted to show you all the different things that I'm going to be using. So I've got these sanding sponges, and the nice thing about these sanding sponges is they actually have angles, and that way I can get into cracks easy and try to sand as much as I can without actually having to go to the straight sandpaper. Now I do have sandpaper, I have 80, 120, and 220. And this is also 80, and you can see it also goes all the way to 320. And then I have a bunch of different types of sanding sticks at different grits. Now the one thing I will say is if you have a bigger piece with a lot of flat surfaces and stuff, you can use like a palm sander and just using these different types of grits if you wanted to. But you just have to be careful because sometimes those can take off way more than what you actually want them to take off. Sometimes with an orbital sander or a palm sander, what you'll have is it will heat up the PLA too much and it'll actually start to become gooey and actually deform your 3D print. So just be aware of that if you're going to be sanding with anything like electronic, like a palm sander or anything like that. So I have all of my printed pieces and I also went ahead and removed all of the supports because I figured I don't need to show you guys how to remove supports. Now the one thing I will say is having a good set of pliers and snips are crucial to be able to remove your supports easily. You can use it by other methods, but this is one of those things that this set right here, I mean, it helps me all the time to remove my supports. And one of my favorite ones is this. It is a flat piece where I can get right up against the support, grab it, and pull it off. Then having a really nice set of snips. That is something that's crucial when you're 3D printing. And you can really get in there and cut out all of those extra supports. Another thing that's really great to have is a Dremel and with deburring bits. And these right here are just different shapes and sizes to be able to get in there. And this is really great because it will help smooth out some of your prints. And we're going to be using some of this to be able to smooth some of our prints as well for some of the rougher areas. And I'll show you that in just a minute. But a Dremel can help save you a lot of time sanding and snipping away at supports. Another thing you want to have is a respirator because you are going to be kicking up some plastic dust and you don't want to be breathing that in. So having a good respirator is crucial because you want to stay safe while doing this. So just always be safe and think about where you're actually doing this. Make sure that you're in a well ventilated area and you're also using some type of respirator to protect your lungs. 
so now we got all of our pieces and some of these prints I actually probably would have re-supported in a different way because especially the back right here of Mario, I mean, it... It isn't a pretty print in any way, but I wanted to actually have something where I need to really clean this up so you can see the difference. So we are going to clean this up and make it just, I mean, glass smooth, and we're going to fix every little defect. But we still have layer lines, and we're going to get rid of all of that because I want this to look beautiful. When we're done with this, I want it to look like a resin print, that smooth to where you don't see any layer lines. So let's go ahead and get started. So it doesn't matter how you start. I always like to start with the smallest objects first just because I like to feel a little bit of an accomplishment. This guy right here had actually the support would not come off and I actually had to snip it all away. But once again, it doesn't really matter because when it's fully attached, you don't see it in any way. And I think that's the big thing that I want to just kind of get across is you only want to really work on the areas that you're going to see because there's no reason for me to work so hard and get all of this super smooth when I'm never even going to see it. So we need to just focus on all of the areas you see. Now when it comes to the bottom of this, there are a little bit of an area that I'm going to have to smooth because you could see it possibly. And also if you notice that it doesn't fit good. So I'm going to have to adjust this little peg so it actually goes in there perfectly flat. Now when it comes to sanding, I am going to start with an 80 grit. And this is the thing about an 80 grit. You are going to take off a lot of filament. And you also have the potential to be able to make like grooves in your 3D print, like scratch marks. And you don't want to push super hard when you're using an 80 grit. So I'm gonna start using the 80 grit on these boots first. Now one thing I will say about these sanding sponges, it is a good little tip and hack to where when you're doing it, you want to be able to mark this because most of the ones I've used do not tell you what it is. So now I know that this is an 80 grit because when you get them all together, especially with those finer ones, you're not gonna know which one is which. And 80 grit's pretty easy to tell because of how rough it is. So the bottom of his foot, you absolutely see, and I wanna make sure we get this nice and smooth. So all I'm going to do is start sanding this foot. So I'm sanding the foot right here, and one thing I want to note, once again, I could be sanding all of this, but there's no need. So I really just need to get this piece right here. So only where I see it. So I'm gonna just start sanding this down a little bit. So seeing that, I've already realized that it will take forever and I'll probably go through this whole thing. That's why I'm gonna go ahead and use this Dremel. And using this Dremel, you wanna be absolutely careful because you can gouge it and cause more problems than it's worth. So you're just lightly brushing across the surface. And also make sure that you're wearing safety glasses because little flecks can like pop out and you do not wanna get this stuff in your eye. So safety first. I also have a set of these sharp picks. These picks have really nice sharp edges and they're really good to just kind of pick out the edges and try to get a little more definition because they can do a little bit of cutting. So I'm just gonna be scraping it like that to really get that definition of the sole. That way I don't lose any of my detail. So now I'm going to just kind of sand a little more to get rid of some more of these layer lines. Then I'll get the rest of the boot because I do have a little mark right here where the support did stick to it. And what I'm going to do for that is it's actually a gouge. So I am going to probably be filling this in with some putty. Now I have a paper towel with just a little bit of water and all I'm going to be using this for is just kind of wiping everything away so I can get all that dust out of there. And once I have all the dust away, then I can get a better idea of how smooth I've gotten this and getting all of those layer lines gone. Because you can really start to see it show up, especially through all of the sanding. So you can see that I've gotten some of it, but not all of it. The back here, I mean, it feels smooth as glass, even though it is rough, because you can even see that sheen right there. 
And this is getting close to what we want because we're not going to get rid of every single layer line on this. That is where our next step is really gonna help fill in all of those cracks and then we're also going to be able to get it even smoother than this to where we're not gonna see any of these layer lines. So I'm gonna move back to my 80 grit and start sanding that. But the other thing is, is I'm probably gonna to switch to some actual sandpaper to try to get this. So I've just got a sheet of my 80 grit and then I'm just taking just a little bit. I don't want this huge sheet. I wanna be able to have a little like small piece that I can manipulate really well. So when I do that, I literally just fold it in half and then I have a nice little triangle. That way I can kind of grip it really well and start sanding. All right, so this is pretty much ready for primer. So now that I have this all sanded and it looks really rough and it looks like it's in bad shape, but this is what we want it to look like because that means all of our layer lines are gone. You see some gouges and scratches from the rough grit and that's okay for this because the filler primer we're going to be using is going to be filling it in really well. So I'm gonna use this little clamp and well, let's take it to the spray booth and paint this thing. So what I'm using is this Rust-Oleum Automotive Primer. It's a two-in-one filler and sandable primer. Now I'm just doing light passes and building it up. I'm not trying to just hose it down and get like a ton in the very first coat. All right, so now I have the boot all primed and you can see a little bit more of these little nicks, gouges and stuff from the sandpaper and that's perfectly fine for right now because this is going to be a layered process. So as a first pass, it turned out really good. And you remember how bad the back of the boot really looked and we got a lot of that taken care of. Now what I'm going to do is fill in this little nick where that support really stuck to it. And for that, I'm just going to be using this plastic wood filler putty. This stuff is great because it's pink and not because I like the color pink, but it's pink when it's wet. So when it actually dries, it's going to be a tan. And that really helps me out to know when this is fully dry. Now, what I'm really just going to be doing is I don't want to apply a ton because I don't want to keep doing a lot of sanding. So I'm just going to be taking a tiny bit with a stir stick. So I'm going to take my stir stick and put just a little bit right there and immediately take a lot of it away and kind of wipe that off. And all I'm going to do is just use my stir stick to just kind of apply it and wipe it away. But I definitely need to have a little more on there than I want. So right there would be perfectly fine. Then I actually just dipped this in water and I'm going to kind of tap it just to kind of get it wet. I'm gonna dip it in water one more time. Get a little water on the side here and then get it really wet. Now, the reason for this is it'll just give me a nice smooth finish right here, even though I'm gonna be sanding it away, but it's also getting it in that crack really well. And now I can wipe away any access I might have by just scraping it away. And I'll just use my finger to wipe away around the edges. And there we go. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and let this dry and then I'll come back to sand it. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the other boot and I'm going to be sanding it the exact same way. All right, real quick. I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you to all of these amazing people for supporting me on Patreon this month. If you wanna join my Patreon, you'll get exclusive access to my private Discord servers where we talk about painting, printing, and everything in between. You'll also get access to all of my behind the scenes content, where I show you what I'm working on, what the upcoming videos are, and you can have the opportunity to vote on the videos that I make. If you're interested, the link's below. Other than that, let's get back to the video. Now, one of the areas that's different is for this part right here, right at the very top where that gradation, and I saw that, you see that plateauing of the layering. 
So I'm going to be really hitting that a little harder and just gonna go through the same stuff. But this time I'm actually going to start with the 80 grit sandpaper that is not the sanding sponge. So I'm just going to get a really hard application of this to get everything smooth. And we also have a little bit of where the supports were actually attached, it just did not look that great. So I'm gonna to have to do some really heavy sanding on this. But I will say this, I'm doing it for the edges. So one nice little technique that I use is I've got this little piece of wood and it's pretty thin and what you can do is kind of create your own sanding block. So I'll just put it around the edge like this and now I can have a good edge. So if I wanted to just kind of fold it like this, now I have this sharp edge right here that I can use, especially on flatter surfaces like this. It's not like I can set this on the table and just kind of go like this, but I can hold this and go like that to be able to get a really nice grip on it. And it's sanding it really evenly. So on the edge of the shoe, I can get a nice edge on it like that because I don't want to round the corner of this shoe. And the same thing on the edge of the shoe, the sole of the shoe. Okay, so now I've got his sole of the shoe all done. And just to make sure when I put it on there, I can see that I've gotten the edges really good. Now I'm just going to do the rest of it. And this block method does not work really well on full rounded surfaces. Cause if you're using this on something like the top of the shoe, you can really do some damage because you can get flat spots. So you wanna make sure you're not doing that and either just using your hand or using a sanding sponge. So I'm actually going to switch to my sanding sponge for this part and then kind of come back with this. Another thing is, is I don't go back and forth. You want to make a circular pattern. That way you don't get any like deep gouges just in one direction. And that's another way that you can get flat spots. So always kind of keep a circular pattern when you can, because obviously for the edge of the shoe right here, I'm not going to be able to do a circular pattern very well. So I, there's no other choice for that. But when you can, you want to do a circular pattern. So now I'm going to use a 120 grit and really start to bring down some of this roughness that the 80 grit brought. Now I'm going to go to a 220 to even get it finer. Now I have some areas that are just like a little bit frayed right here, so I'm just gonna take my sharp pick and kind of scratch it away to really keep that definition. Cause like I said, I wanna keep these hard lines. And there we go. So now we're ready for the hands. So the boots were pretty easy because it's just a big smooth surface. And now that I'm going to move to the hands, uh, right underneath and also like right here. So like right here, I'm gonna have to do a lot of sanding to get this nice and smooth and get this edge kind of back to where it should be. Same thing with here. This is where the supports all were and you can see there's just a little bit of areas that really need uh, a little bit of TLC. So I'm gonna be using the exact same process I have been using, but the big thing with this specifically is I am going to be using a lot of different sanding sticks because obviously a sanding sponge and sandpaper is gonna be a little hard to get into some of these cracks to really get them sanded well. So I'm not gonna be able to get in there, but with a sanding stick, I'm gonna be able to just get right in there. So that's where I'm gonna really rely on these. Now, one great thing about these sanding sticks, so I've already been using this a bit and it's the sandpaper's kind of uh, worn away. You can actually just use some snips and snip it off like that and then you can get even more use out of it. So I'll just keep staying like that until I'm down to like a little bit of a nub. And that is one way that you can really get 
the most bang for your buck and really use this entire sanding stick. So once it gets worn down, all you gotta do is just snip it off and now you got a nice clean edge again. Another thing I found is if you actually snip this at a nice angle, then you kind of have a point right there. And the point does wear down pretty quick, but you can get into some of those cracks a lot easier doing it this way. So now I'm just gonna kind of go through, get a general sanding, and then get into those cracks with my sanding sticks. All right, so now I have this, now I'm moving on to the body and I've started sanding it down, but I've got a lot of areas that need a lot of work because you can see how this is right where the supports were because I actually printed it upside down. So I have some of these areas that, I mean, they're, they're pretty rough looking. They're not a really great print right there. So what I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna take my Dremel and just start carving this away and shaping this and trying to get rid of some of these edge lines before I even start sanding it. So there we go, I've grinded off a lot of that already and I've already got it rounded off. And just to see what it looks like with the hand on it, so I've got a little more fix right here and this is still just a little too rough before I wanna sand it. So I'm gonna bring down some of that and kinda of shave that away with the Dremel. But you can see how it's actually turning out pretty good. Even though how bad that was, just a little bit of a Dremel can really do a lot of damage to uh, your filament. So it will chew it away. So you gotta make sure that you're staying really controlled and just using it really lightly. Okay, so now I'm ready to get the 80 grit and just start sanding this away. So I got this arm really nice. You can see there are some deep scratches from that 80 grit and that is the one thing where this fillable primer is really going to you know, help us with that because this was just as bad and all of these scratches are very minimal. And when we sand it, a lot of it's gonna go away. So now I'm gonna move on to the top of the leg and the back of the cuff of his uh, overalls. Some of these cracks will be a little bit of a challenge, but I think we can do it. So I've gotten all of those edges that I really needed to get smooth, smoothed. There's a few areas here and there that I can't really get too well, but that's where I'm gonna really rely on some of the filler primer. And you can see that we've got everything sanded really well. So now it's time to move to the head. Now the print itself is really nice. There's not a lot of layer lines or anything like that. It's a very smooth print. It's when I get to back here. So the actual little peg where it fits into the head, as, as you can see right here, like it goes in like that. Now, the issue was the support failed, but it caught itself and printed it. But this isn't gonna be an issue because guess what? We're not gonna see it. But you can see how rough this is and I've also got a flat spot because I printed it on the build plate like this. So it has some stuff I've gotta clean up. So I'm gonna go ahead and start dremeling this and clean this up real good. All right, so I've got him all sanded and he is falling apart and looking good. So he is all done. I've gotten all the areas that I can really get to and I'm just gonna be relying on the primer to see how these lines go because there's some areas up underneath that bill of the hat I can't fully get to very well, but also it's going to be like hidden in shadow. So I'm not too worried about it. So I could put putty on this right now to fill in these gaps, but I'm not going to because I really don't know what it looks like that well. I know there's a lot of deep crevices right here, but first I'm going to prime it because I wanna see what it looks like first and see how bad it's going to be because the primer will fill in some, but it's not gonna make it look beautiful. I'm going to have to actually put putty here. So I'm just gonna wait until I get primer on this and then we're gonna really see it, but we'll see what this looks like once I'm done. 
So now that I've got all this, I'm moving on to the Koopa. The Koopa has some really rough patches right here. I'm gonna have to clean up with the Dremel and inside his mouth and up top here. I'm gonna have to really clean that out. But the rest of it is just gonna be some simple sanding and it should be pretty easy. This is a really clean print and there's not a lot of layer lines. There's some, but not a lot. So it's gonna be pretty easy to sand down. So I'm just gonna move forward and do that now. Now it was a beautiful hot day, so I went ahead and took these in the backyard to go ahead and prime them. That way they could dry super fast for me. And once again, I just did really light sprays, short strokes. I wasn't just holding down the nozzle and just trying to coat everywhere. That's the key when you're using this primer. You want to make sure that you're getting a nice even coat and you just build that up layer by layer after it dries. All right, now we have everything primed and this is the opportunity we have to see what we still need to fix. Now, if we look at the fists, they're looking actually pretty good. You're gonna see a little bit of texture and a little bit of grit and that is perfectly fine. That is what this next step is for, to get rid of all of that. So if we look at other areas, let's say this monster, you can see how it actually filled in a whole lot more than I actually anticipated. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to this and sand this and get this with putty and things like that. But the first thing is how I actually go back over for my first pass to make sure we've got everything. So for the next step, I actually use a 600 grit wet or dry sandpaper. And the thing about this is, is we're gonna use just a little bit at a time. We do not wanna use a whole bunch. All right, so we can see just this little bit of grit right here, and it looks like we can see a little bit of layer lines, a little bit right here. But for the most part, it actually got a lot of it. So we're going to take our little tiny strip, and this is all we're going to do. I'm going to take advantage of this edge in the very beginning and I'm just going to lightly sand this and I'm not putting a lot of force. I'm just lightly doing it. And we can see that we've got some dust and already got some buildup on there. So we're just going to go ahead and keep doing this until it really just fills up right there. Now, the reason why you don't want to go with a very low grit sandpaper, just for the sheer fact we don't want to be scratching into this primer. If you see already, we've gotten this, this is actually like super smooth because we're really just kind of polishing this paint and this is going to get it nice and smooth without removing a ton. We're relying on that filler to fill in all those cracks and we're just removing any excess. And when we get a lot of buildup on there, we can just rip it off and then we've got more. So I'm gonna go ahead. And the key here is just nice and slow and you don't want to remove too much. Now if the filament starts to show, that is perfectly fine. It is not the end of the world if you can start to see your filament because once I start sanding things, it's, it's going to show through a little bit. And another thing I do is I will actually fold this, then I'll have a little bit of a flap and I'll fold that. Then you have a nice little point right there that you can use. So I can go in this crack and try to sand it a little better. The other thing you could do is if you have a pick, you could actually wrap it around that pick to be able to get a better point. And then you can go in and sand it to get even more precision. And just remember the key is I am not pushing super hard. So you can see I've actually, you start to see some of that filament shine through perfectly fine, but 
it has gotten rid of a lot of those little ridges and things and this feels like glass. Now, it looks like there's still little recesses and things like that, but don't let that deceive you. You really wanna kinda look at it at an angle and see is there really holes still? Because right here, I feel like it's very smooth and if we do another coat of paint, that is going to just go away completely. But right here, I actually have some lines, so that means I just have to sand it a little more. And then also I've got a little bit here that I've gotta take care of, so I'm just gonna go around and just take my time and sand this down. That's the whole thing about this process. You just wanna take your time when you're actually doing this. You are going to go through a lot of sandpaper. So that's why I like to use just little bits at a time. So I'm using 100% of the sandpaper. The other thing I like to do when we're dealing with sharp edges and details, I'll go ahead and I'll take the pick and I will actually just kind of score the the creases and corners just to make sure I still keep that definition because the, you can get paint buildup depending on how you spray painted it. So all I'm going in and I'm just kind of scratching away to keep those nice hard lines. And you can see how you get that buildup on your pick and that's actually removing that to keep those nice sharp edges. Now I have the emblem all done and you can kind of see how smooth that's looking because it's almost polishing it. Now there are a few little areas like right there that I'm going to have to hit again with primer, but this is done. So you just basically need to do this to the entire model. So now I'm gonna go through, do all of the face, then we'll work on the back of the head. So now I have the face all done. It's nice and smooth and it's looking really good. Now I'm gonna to move to the back and what I'm gonna use is this 220 grit sandpaper. And this is going to be taking away a lot of the excess and it'll sand away any of the bumps. And then I'm only going to be able to see the holes that I have left. And then we're going to move to the next step. All right, so now I have everything nice and sanded down and we can easily see where the holes are and what I need to fill. So I'm gonna take this plastic wood filler now and just kind of take a little chunk out and I don't need a whole lot. I only want a little bit for this. Then I'm gonna take a little water, then I'm gonna mix it up real good. Okay, so now that I have this, I am literally just gonna be putting it on there like this. A really nice thin coat of it. Just so we can fill in all of those cracks. Okay, so now I have this filled in nice and I don't see any recesses, I've got it all covered with this nice thin coat because I don't want to just go like crazy on the coverage because I'm going to have to sand this. So the thinner the coat, the easier it's going to be and then I can go back over it and see if I need to add any more. But it looks like this will probably take care of everything. Then I'm gonna move on and start sanding the rest of the pieces. So I've got everything sanded down and Mario's body is looking fantastic. So if you see, we've got some blue showing through because you know, I was just sanding them down, but then those layer lines, I mean, they're, they're pretty much gone. Um, and it looks really nice. So the next part we're going to work on is the Koopa. So the Koopa has a lot more issues with it than I could see. And that was my own fault because I printed it in yellow because I just thought it would be cool. 
and I've got a lot of fix up to do on this because the primer really just showed that through. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be sanding this with a higher grit because I know this is going to take another maybe one or two passes of primer and sanding. So I'm going to take that 220 grit and just sand this guy down and get him as smooth as possible. So the putty is dried and I've already started sanding some of it. And if you see here, it has already filled in all those cracks and it's looking really nice and smooth. And all I'm using is this 220 grit sandpaper. And the key to this is I am not trying to push hard. I mean, I am just dragging this across it to just remove what is needed. If I have a little more, that is perfectly fine because there was some dips and things like that and this is just getting it nice and smooth. And I've also helped with that flat spot we had, so it's more rounded. So I'm just gonna continue to just lightly sand this and just get all of the excess that I need off. And if I leave any, that's great. And the other key is I'm going in circles. I don't wanna go straight because I'm not wanting to gouge any out of this. Once I had everything sanded, I went to the backyard again and did a really nice thin coat over all of the puttied and sanded areas. And I also did just an extra coat on all of the other pieces as well, just to make sure everything is going to look beautiful. So I went ahead and reprimed him and now I've just got a few little snicks and things like that that I've got to sand down. But if you look at this back, look at that. That putty did an amazing job, but I think we might have to add just a little bit right here, but I'm gonna sand it first to see what we can do with it. But I mean, this turned out really nice. Now this hard line right here isn't as hard as I'd like it, but it's smooth and that's the important thing for me. So you can see how smooth that is. And the front of this, I mean, th this has turned out really nice. I've got everything else primed again as well, and you can see how beautiful this is looking. I mean, you cannot tell that this was an FDM print. So everything's looking good, and here we can just put his head on there too. Like, this is, I, I'm very happy with how it turned out. But the one thing about this is, it just takes a ton of work. So it's really what, how well you want your prints to turn out. I also reprimed the turtle, and he is looking a lot smoother. I still have some layer lines that I'm gonna to have to take care of, and his face and mouth is looking pretty good. There's a few little nicks in here that I gotta take care of and sand down. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to sand this, and then we're gonna go reprime it again, and then come back and we should be done. All right, I got these both sanded down really well, and now I just have to take it back out and do one final coat of primer, and then we're ready for the final reveal. So here's what we started with. We started with an FDM print, and now here are the final results. Now, this thing took so much work, but it looks phenomenal. Now, the Koopa still has just a few areas that I just fully couldn't get to, which I, it's, it's honestly bothering me, but it looks phenomenal. I mean, all of the places that you are going to see naturally, I mean, they're perfect. And by the time I do get paint on this, you're not gonna be able to notice any of those little imperfections in those areas. So I, I'm just being a little hard on myself. But Mario, I mean, come on, he looks so good. The amount of like smoothness, that back of that head, I am just, I am so happy of how this turned out. 
This looks genuinely like a resin 3D print. Now keep in mind, this won't work for every single type of 3D print because if it's a lot of texture, you're gonna lose it as you saw how much sanding we did. But that being said, no one said that you can't do part of your model with this technique and get some of it super smooth because if they have some smooth like pants or something like that on a figure you're painting, you could absolutely use this just on parts of it. So just keep that in mind. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll go ahead and see you in this next video.